So how do we access text, stored in purchase orders, on item or on header level? This is an important information to know for consultants and also for key users and technical users. For sure we can always retrieve the information for the single purchase orders by displaying them. However, I want to show you another way, which is also important if we want to pass this information to other objects. So let's say for instance, that the information must be retrieved and passed to a program to be visible in output management. Therefore, we will create one purchase order where we will fill both information on the item text level and also on the header field level. Afterwards, we will access the purchase order and navigate to the technical details for those fields. And then we will pass the information to a function module called read text. And afterwards, I will also show you the tables where the text information is stored. Sounds good? Then make sure to subscribe now and activate the bell. And let's go. Let's jump into it and create a purchase order. This is done via transaction code ME21N. Simply select the normal standard purchase order, provide our supplier, purchasing org, group and company code, then a material, a plant, a net price, let's say 100, also quantity, so really the standard information, storage location. And now it's time to store some text information. Let's do this on header level. So we click on header, texts, and then this is a header text, store it over here. And then also on the item level, item details, go to texts, and then over here to item texts and insert a sample information, test item text like that. And now we will save the purchase order. Purchase order has been saved. We go to more purchase order, other purchase order, insert a number over here, and now we can inspect it. So we see this is a header text and on line item level we see our text stored for the line item. Now it's time to retrieve the information. So we double click here on this is a header text, like that. We click on accept, then we navigate to more, go to header, and over here we can see all the necessary information that we need to pass to the function module. So let's actually open our text over here, take the name, so let's say information required, is first of all the text name, then we have the language, then we have the text ID, and we have the text object. This is the only information that is variable. You can see that it exactly corresponds to the number of the purchase order. So let me just copy this one. And then the language is always kind of default, depending on your system settings. The text ID is also always the same, and the text object is in this case the echo table. This information we will pass in a minute to our function module. Let's also retrieve the same information for the line item. So we will copy this one for PO line item this time. And over here, I will show you what we need to insert. So let's go back to the purchase order. On line item level, we scroll down, double click here on this field. We click again on more, go to header. And then over here, we can see also the same information, but this time for the line item. So the text name we need to copy because this changed. And by the way, you can already see the logic. So the text name for the header equals the purchase order number. And the text name for the item equals the purchase order number plus, in this case, 00010. And for the next one, for the next line item, it would be 00020 and so on. In your system, this could also be 0001, 0002 and so on. This depends on whatever we start in customizing for the document type, but it will follow logic and just count upwards. Language and text ID stay the same and the text object will this time be ECPO as it is from the table called ECPO for line item information. Yeah, and this is it. Now we can pass the information to our function module. Therefore, we navigate to the transaction code slash n se37. That's slash n se37. We select the function module read underscore text and click on test execute. That's F8 on your keyboard. And over here, you can see exactly what we need to insert. So the client first of all, but this is kind of defaulted depending on whatever client you logged on. Then we have the ID. Let's start with our header. The ID here is F01. So we take it, copy it over here, language, and then the name. The name in this case is the purchase order number for the header. And last but not least, we have the text object, which is echo. And then we click on execute. We can now see the function has been executed successful. We can see one entry as a result. Click on this one, 
and here we can find the header text, exactly what we included in the purchase order creation. Let's do the same for the item level. So navigate out of here. This information stays the same. What we need to change is the object to ECPO table. And the name, as I said, this follows the logic. In my case, we have the purchase order and then plus three zeros and a 10. Next item would be 20 and so on. Execute, one entry, and here we can see the result. And by the way, this a bit more cryptic information over here, so the ID, language, name, object, and so on, can be retrieved via slash n, se16n, and the table names are stxl for the line item and stxh for the header details. This marks the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please subscribe to my channel to not miss any more videos, and see you next time.